the partner I had that allowed space for me to meet you and to have this beautiful connection that we have now, that individual was very, very devout in their belief system. At the moment, I started to explore all world religions and all world beliefs more in depth and held love as my religion or my faith. And when that relationship started to break down and I was being told that I was wrong for my beliefs or that there were things that were going on that my partner, my person said, I can't stand by you through this. Then I had to look at my relationships and how I'm showing up in relationships and how the inner critic started playing a key role, even in my spiritual beliefs, into my relationships. Do I change my beliefs in order to make my partner happy? Do I, Am I really wrong for what I'm believing, feeling, exploring? And why is it wrong to desire to explore things? You know, it kept driving me forward. So there's that overlap between spirituality, religion, and relationships, because sometimes we can create codependent relationships based on our beliefs. Absolutely. Yeah. Or, um, yeah, I mean, just with how foundational believing or nowadays even not believing in things, many people, whatever it is that they believe, so I guess not believing is still believing in something. Yeah, it's a belief. It's still a belief, right? Yeah. Um, but a lot of people are viewing it more as, or taking it on as an identity, right? And and that's part of what I believe you do such a great job expressing and explaining to people, you know, in terms of, and we've done this on the podcast, explaining how, you know, our ideas or our thoughts, perspectives, beliefs, they aren't our identity. Even our actions. Even our actions, right? They're not our identity. We have the opportunity to, uh, you know, transcend that. And, but it is an opportunity for us to experience and explore and hopefully play and, and enjoy. Right. I mean, that's, that's, we, we need to have a framework in which to engage in life. And so these beliefs, thoughts, ideas, perspectives are great ways to do that. But if they, if we take them on as our identity and it becomes a, you know, a part of our ego, for example, and then someone thinks differently then immediately it's a, it's a right, wrong scenario. It's a, you know, opposites, uh, you know, it's no longer a spectrum. It's a, it's a dualistic approach. Right. And speaking back to what I navigated, right, there was a perspective because of a belief system that I needed to be saved from myself versus a desire to understand, well, why is this coming up for you now? What can we do together so that I'm honoring myself, you're honoring yourself, but we're also honoring the relationship? But the moment that inner critic gets in there from the ego standpoint, which you're per, you're so beautifully saying, then it becomes that I'm right, you're wrong. You must become a mini version of my own belief system or the relationship can't go any further. And that's ego. And ego is the best friend to your inner critic. They've formed this little posse together that really holds tight on our abilities to expand our own internal awareness or our own internal landscape, because keeping you in the box will absolutely continue to give them control. Yeah. Right. And when love is less important than what, whatever it is looks like, that might be a great opportunity to take a step back and say, is what I believe in actually rooted in what it's, meant to be yes and that can be a faith that can be politics that can be um culture i mean there's so much that goes in 